Now we're going to move into page 91 on vector addition and subtraction, thinking about how to do it graphically. So sections 3.2 and 3.3 are, like I said, really getting into the mechanics of how to use and manipulate these ideas of vectors. These are tools that we're going to be using throughout the course because many of the quantities we're going to study, such as force and momentum, are all going to be vectors. So in order to study these ideas, we need to understand vectors. So the first thing that you might think of what can you do with a vector is adding and subtracting. Now, again, going back to the idea of physics as ideas that can be represented multiple ways, we can represent and think about vector addition two ways, graphically and algebraically. This chapter deals with graphically. And in particular, it thinks about vectors in only two dimensions. So side to side and up and down, no front back. So the three dimensions in our world are, so we have three dimensions in our world. A dimension is a direction in which you can move. So you've got say forward, back, then you have up, down, left, right. Those are our three dimensions. It turns out that most things only happen in two at a time. So we're really going to be interested in vectors that have only two dimensions. We're going to be thinking in two dimensions for the most part. So things that are moving, say, forward and back and up and down, or up and down and left and right, or forward and back and left and right. You know, we very rarely will do all three possible motions at the same time. So we're going to start with vectors in two dimensions. There's some nice notation here about how they represent vectors, so that's probably worth paying attention to. Then you really get into the nitty-gritty of how to add vectors using what's known as the head-to-tail method. So I would recommend you really pay attention to this method, really understand it. There's some problems in your homework to help you practice with this. So make sure you give this one a shot. If you have any questions, as always, Come to an office hour. We'll be happy to help you out. You can see that this is a very step-by-step -step algorithmic procedure. So it, it's just learn the steps and really go through them. It's just like, say, long division. There's a series of steps you do, and you just repeat that process over and over for any long division problem. It's the same thing with vector addition. You just learn the series of steps and you can do it for any two vectors. So, so you have some more examples, which are all beneficial. Then they get into the idea of vector subtraction, which is going to be important because you've seen that, for example, acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time and this thing's a vector so you're looking at a vector subtraction in the definition of velocity so we need to make sure we understand vector subtraction so that's what begins here on the bottom of page 95 the basic idea is encapsulated in this picture that when you add a negative sign to a vector you flip the direction. So the vector is going B goes this way, negative B goes this way, and then you can think of subtraction just as adding negative numbers, just like you can for numbers. You can do it with vectors too. So here's vector subtraction graphically with a few nice examples for you to think about. The next thing with vectors to think about is multiplying vectors by scalars. 
If you've ever taken any physics class ever, you will probably remember seeing force is equal to mass times acceleration. Force and acceleration are vectors, but mass is a scalar. If you think back to chapter two, a scalar was defined as a number without a direction. Masses don't really point anywhere, they just are, so mass is a scalar. So the ability to multiply a vector by a scalar is clearly going to be important as that operation is in the one of the fundamental equations we're going to be using for this class. So learn how to do that. Before you get into thinking about how to add vectors algebraically or, or with something that you might more recognize as math, you have to know how to separate a vector into components or parts. This is nicely done with a picture. If you have a vector like this, it has a part that goes horizontal and it has a part that goes vertical. So these parts are the components. And you need to be able to learn how to do this before being able to do um, vector addition with something that looks maybe more like math you're used to seeing. And this process really comes down to trigonometry, sines, cosines, tangents. If you look on the math we expect you to know page, we're expecting you to know the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent. We're not expecting you to know any weird trig identities like sine squared of theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. We're not expecting you to know any of those, but we're expecting you to know what sine, cosine, and tangent are in terms of the sides of a triangle. Again, if you're uncomfortable with this, please come and see myself or one of the TAs as soon as possible, and we can work out some, some review to get you up to speed.